Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Tricia, and I am a supervisor here at Downers Grove Public Library in the Circulation Department. Um, joining me is Annie, who is the uh, training supervisor at the Computer Help Desk or the IT Department at Downers Grove. Um, today, we're going to talk about Beyond Books. Um, a lot of us tend to do the same thing at the library. You come in, you check out your book or your DVD, and you know that's pretty much it. And and sometimes you know that that's that's the extent of what we do at the library. But we offer a lot more than just that at the library. We have a lot of services and um, resources that a lot of our patrons aren't aware of. And so we're hoping that through this um, presentation, you'll see something that interests you, and you'll use those services or those um, resources even more and that will enhance your library experience with uh, Downers Grove. Um, I'm going to share my screen with you because I'm going to go through, it's called Beyond Books because on our website that's the the tab that goes across the ribbon, that's one of the drop downs. So uh, if, again if you like me you go onto the, the website, you click in search, you type in the book you're looking for and then that's pretty much it. But there are other tabs across there, so I'm going to start sharing my screen right now, and we're going to go from there. I also want to say uh, Annie's going to be uh, sort of monitoring the chat room, so if you have any questions or anything that are about something, you know, you can type it in the chat. Or I mean, there's only a few of us; you can, you know, just <laughs> speak out about uh, it. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. It's not like it's 30 of them. Yeah, I was going to say, you probably won't yeah. even do that. So, yeah. this is our website, and I, these are the tabs I was speaking of across here, and I'm going to move us down a little bit. So, usually you just go here and you search our catalog for some things, but we also have these tabs across here that um, drop down menus for other things that are available in the library. And today we're going to check out this Beyond Books. In here we have 3D printing, anything Emporium, the art collection, cover to cover podcast, media lab, poster printing, and wireless printing. So we'll start first with the 3D printing, which is where we actually are on this page right here. And so I'm going to show you some give you show you a little quick thing so this little doodad here is one, one of the things that you can get in 3d printing and i know you saw 3d printing you're thinking that's that's not really a thing because when i heard it i thought you can't print something 3d but oh yes yeah you can really do it <laughs> it was really, really shocking but uh, people come in sometimes i don't know if you like brackets on your um your blinds they might break and they've not been able to find a replacement and they come in and show this thing to our uh our 3d printer guy max and he would say okay he take a look at it and you put it in this wonderful machine here you see where the little dinosaur is and it will actually print out in 3d that item i know <laughs> you guys are like what now, can, I, can i ask you something already Yes. What about the different materials? I mean, if you're talking a bracket, how do you do that? So the thing is, we only have there's certain it's a polymer fiber material. It's what they call it. It's um, I'm sorry. It's standard PLA plastic. So and it and it, on the web page it'll tell you what colors you can get and things like that. I'm going to say most of the time people use it for things like um, game pieces that they've lost or just um, like me, I like elephants. So I sent a request for an elephant and, this, <laughs> and it sits on my desk and you can either, um, it'll tell you here too, you need to have the dimensions of what you want in the color, but there's also a database called Thingiverse and if I'm going to click right here and it's sort of a database of things that some people have already made or requested and you can send this in the request email to, to Max and see if he can make some of this. So you, this gives you an idea of what people use. I've seen people do some, mm, there's a lot of, there's a lot in this database, but um, I actually chose the elephant from this database. Look, caps for the pen, you lose that. Some type of, I don't know what those things are. Oh, look, a CD holder, it looks like. 
some type of a game. Just there's all types of things. Oh, a creepy hand. I don't know what that is, but <laughs> that is there's a link to this Thingiverse database right here on the web page on our um, the 3D printing web page. So you can click that. And what I did was I just um, chose one of those. I clicked, uh, sent an email to, and it'll tell you here somewhere. I'm sorry. Um, here we go. Ah. <laughs> um, here we go. Right here. To uh, to print an item, submit the following information to this email address, and that's what I did. And I just told him what I wanted, and and he got right back to me and said, "Oh, you know, we can't get that in that color, or you know, that size is kind of wonky. Can we adjust it?" So once you send it to them, they'll contact you and say, "Hey, you know, yeah, we can do that, and you know, it, we'll get it done for you." And it'll tell he'll tell you how long it takes. Um, I would give it about a week and is that usually what it takes for them for max i guess it depends too on how many orders he has yeah, but it depends on how many orders but you know it depends on what he has to do like when you were saying that uh, there was somebody who her refrigerator was old and she lost the refrigerator thing so he made those for her so he because she couldn't buy them mm -hmm. it's like for the drawers i was like oh my god <laughs> so and they actually, we can't do it, but they're actually building 3D houses. So oh. out of plastic. But there's also things you can like, when we first got it, there's like corn, it was made with corn. And there's also 3D things that you can make food with. So who knows? But we don't have that, we just have plastic. <laughs> yeah, but it's probably about a week. Yeah, and the price of it is, um, there's a minimum of $1 charge for all prints, but it's depending on the weight of it and the size. So it's 10 cents per gram. So just to give you an idea, uh, this little guy was a dollar and 30 cents. This little, it looks like little hedgehogs. And I don't know what anyone would need this little spear or thing, but this was $3 and six cents. And I think mine was about the same. I think. I think I was it was close to like four dollars for the my elephant. He's so cute. Keep <laughs> him on my desk. But that's just and I, I, honestly, guys, when I heard this, I thought this is a joke, right? Someone's trying to be funny, 3D printing, because it sounded so futuristic. But yet, it is a thing. So that's one of the things that uh, that you can do here at the library. You can get 3D prints. Any questions so far about that besides uh okay, let's move on to the next thing. Okay, so it says the anything emporium, but I'm gonna go out of order. I'm gonna go to the art collection because I want to come back to this because the anything emporium is my favorite section of all of them. So I'm gonna go to the art collection. Now, if you visited the library, you know that we have art displayed throughout the library, but we also have um so there's art collections and you can see like there's 3d art there's like sculptures and things hanging around but we also in our what we call our north lobby which is the one that faces the railroad tracks we have a section where our um our media our, our art person <laughs> um she displays different art I, I don't know how long it they last there but there's an art display and so right now there's some really nice um native american art that's hanging there and I think they did it because we had that land acknowledgement program and it sort of went well with that well anything that's there and sometimes in the cafe the cafe that's on the other side there'll be art displayed there and I don't know if you know but the, you, you could buy some of that art if you wanted to, if the if the artist is actually selling them we'll have a price list for it and so if you want if you like something that you saw and we actually because one of our um clerks in the circulation department did some beautiful photography of wildlife beautiful and we bought one to hang in the circulation department and it's just beautiful so and on this page though this is the current exhibition so i'm going to click to view it and so when you come into the library this is what's currently being displayed this artist's work and over here usually they'll tell you a little bit about the 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 um, artist and if they can be contacted how you would contact them so here we go this is the north gallery 
and that's just telling you the different portraits that are there and they're sorry I'm sorry for making you dizzy with my scrolling and then there's some also a different artist in the cafe gallery and so if you wanted to know about that you can ask someone at the circulation desk the service desk, about a price list if you were interested in buying anything like that or if you had some art yourself that you you know you know of an artist who might want their work displayed sometimes we display things from art schools or just a private person or you know just just it just varies you know it doesn't there's no you know set reason or anything like that anyone could request it and and I'm pretty sure she has some type of way of vetting whether or not you know she'll display it but we've had even things from the kids from um, Downers Grove South High School and Downers Grove North High School we've displayed some of their artwork in there too so that is under our art collection and I'm going to go back so you can see and yeah so this is our current exhibition and then these are um, paintings that you things that you might see around the library I know this is upstairs on our second floor um, it's like a, a dress a little dress display made out of uh, paper book pages and things like that and if you've come up the stairs you've probably seen um, this one. Oh, and outside our building um, Right there by on Forest is this sculpture of the boy and the girl. And this is our children's room mural, which is very nice. And this one's downstairs by our restrooms, but we have art all over. <laughs> I think this I call this one the witch's hat. I'm not sure what it is, but it, to me it looks like a witch's hat upside down. But it's hanging in the Curtis Street. If you look up, you'll see it hanging up there. So um a lot of people think, oh, it's just you know art to be seen. But for that current um, exhibition, you can actually buy that art if you wanted to. That's our art collection. Any questions about the art? Okay, moving right along. What's next? Oh, cover to cover podcast. Okay. And honestly, <laughs> I had no idea what this was. I said, what? A podcast <laughs> but we do so um, there are a couple of members of the library I think Lauren who's one of the supervisors here in the IT department and one of our PR people and I think maybe Ed who's the media guy they do Cindy 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 Cindy, Cindy Cantry and uh, Ed uh, Brownwheel is the uh, editor media lab specialist mm -hmm. so we have a inventory a library of podcasts and I think initially when I talked to Lauren she said it started out with uh, them sharing information about what was going on like in the library like kind of behind the scenes type thing but it sort of branched out into more than that like so they have different topics and I'm gonna just kind of increase the screen a little bit so you can see so uh, this one is the, the most recent one I see is what we do in the shadows Season one, a child's voice had no idea. But, I mean, we have, they're all titled. And so, Murderbot Diaries. I think they might actually do some, and it gives you an explanation. Let's see. Discuss the library's reintroduction of services and reopening. So, that was probably right when we were opening back up to the public after, uh, you know, we were closed for COVID. And just a lot of, topics and a lot of podcasts and you can play them from our web page cover to cover is a downers grove public library podcast this podcast was created to give our patrons a peek inside the library to learn about services events and staff and to also highlight what the media lab can do for our wonderful patrons like you <laughs> Okay, so that's just a sample of it. So you can, <clears throat> excuse me, you can listen to it here, but um, you can also download the app. You can access it from, if you have an iPhone, from iTunes. Now it does say here, uh, Google, Google Podcast, but I don't, I try to, and I think um, it's no longer available on Google, Google Play, but you can do it with um, iTunes. You can download it. So, 
if you're ever interested, I, the one that we were on, I think it said something about Dolly Parton, who I love. I think she's amazing. So I was like, oh, maybe I'll, <laughs> maybe I'll listen to that one. Um, and all, so there's one that's a movie discussion, book discussions, a movie review. Did you guys know we had podcasts at the library? Yeah. No, I didn't either. <laughs> I know. I thought it was so cool. I'm going to tell you guys, if you can't tell. I really love the library. <laughs> I really love our library. I think that um, growing up, you know, a child of the, the 70s, the library used to be you go in, you're quiet, you check out a book, you get out of there, you, you look through those huge uh, encyclopedia, <laughs> you know, if you were looking for something, they, were, they had those huge sets of encyclopedias and the card catalog. So to see all of these things that are available in the library and for the most part, you know, free or close to free, I think it's just wonderful. So I hope that after this, you guys will, you know, listen to a podcast or get something printed through the 3D printer. But it's um, it's the library has really changed from what um, I was used to in a, in a great way, I think. So. All right. Any questions about our podcast? Well, Come maybe on. not about the podcast, but I know on some of these um little classes that we have at the library they say they're being recorded but is there a way to go back and then look at a recorded class that we've had and if you want to answer that question i know we can but i think it's i think okay. it's i can send you the youtube link we have two places where we post them we post them on our youtube channel and i'll send you the link to that okay. and we also have something called niche academy and um, it probably started about four months ago, um, Niche Academy, that they opened it up for patrons. So there's classes on there, like for COVID. Uh, there's other classes too that we post on there, but we post our classes too. So I'll send you a link to both of them. Oh, so this great, is gonna great. be probably by Friday, you know, probably by Monday, this will be up and I'll send you a link to it. Okay, but great. Thank you. All are, most of them, not all of them, are um, recorded. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. Like yesterday's class was not recorded. So if you signed up for that and didn't come, you're out of luck. But uh, okay. most of them are recorded. So, mm -hmm. but they don't stay up, especially our classes usually stay up a long time. But if you take a class uh, from ATS, which is a reference, and usually they're classes, they're only up there for about a month or so. Mm -hmm. So it does change. So you should come back frequently. And if you do miss a class, see if it's if, if it's up there, but I'll send you the link to it. Okay, great. Thanks. Okay, good. And, and usually for the ones that I do, um, I, I do a PowerPoint presentation. And so afterwards, I'll we like to send it out to the participants. So if you like you, you know, missed something or you came in or you weren't sure about it. And um, and in the back of it, there's usually some contacts about, the, and for this one, there are several because, you know, each one of these uh, sections, a different person sort of manages it. So you'll be able, there'll be contact information for like the person who does the art gallery and um, Ed who does the media lab. So we try to make it where if you, if you miss it, you'll get the information and then you maybe can call but uh, like Annie said, I think a lot of the ones that, you know, we've been doing, not all of them, will be on our YouTube page. Okay. All right, let's see. What's next? We'll do, what do we do? Cover the, oh, the Media Lab. So when I started working here in 2019, I was actually working in the computer help desk department. And I was amazed to find out about this Media Lab, guys. So there are two of them. There's... Uh, a recording studio, a recording studio in the library. <laughs> I know, right? So um, Ed, who uh, helped me with the video that I did for this, is sort of the, the, the manager of this, the media, the media lab. And you can, music, people come in there and they record music, they record videos. I've seen kids go in there and do, uh, like, record videos for like school projects and things like so one of them is smaller the editing bay is a small one correct um annie it, it's a lot smaller you can go in there and use like the the um, mac computer and do some editing but the bigger one the recording studio there's like green screen capability and just all kinds of 
stuff in there. Like it, it's amazing. I thought, wow, you can actually go in and record. And actually, I think that's where they do the they record the cover to cover podcast in the the media lab. So um, you do have to be a Downers Grove Library card holder, correct, Annie? I believe that's the way it was before to be able to reserve yes. time at the lab. And there are because I'm not a music recording person or anything like that, but there are, there are microphones or things, equipment and things that you would need in there that you can check out and use while you're in the library in that recording. Like, so if you don't have everything, I know there's a keyboard back there. It's just amazing. So <laughs> I just think, you know, if there, this is the library. So, and, and on the page under the Media Lab, it just does give you the requirements or the criteria for what um, you have to be to be able to use. So you have to be 13 and up. So, you know, the kids can't come up here and do it. And you have to be a DGP card holder. Um, the rooms can be booked up four hours, but if, if no one's waiting, you know, you know, they'll extend it and you can't eat or drink inside there. So, but, um, and then down here, like I said, this all sounds like Greek to me, but <laughs> this is, uh, the microphones, some type of interface, uh, some other things, <laughs> video cameras, so tripods. Yes. So, um, anything, really, a lot of things that you would want to use to make the recordings and things like that, it will be here for you to check out when you reserve the room, the media lab. And so I, I just thought it was kind of cool. I have not ever had to use it except for uh, when they make videos of me. But I, before COVID, I would see um, people that were interested in doing music, like being, you know, performers. They would come in here and record their music, like it's, it's like a free studio, you know? It doesn't cost anything to use it, isn't it? I just think it's amazing <laughs> <laughs> that we offer that. And, and so when people complain about the library or things like that, I get very up in arms because I think you guys, we are offering so much great stuff. I think, you know, it, it's just, just take advantage of it. Just come in and, and and I just think a lot of people don't know that that because did you guys know we had a media lab here that you, you probably come to the library a lot and never knew that was even up here <laughs> I know, and I wouldn't have known either if I hadn't started working so that's why I thought this part of the our website I said people need to know about this because if you it's free where are you going to ever get to to use the studio and record your music or your video for free with professional equipment it's great so any questions about the media lab so you guys are going to come in and record your youtube videos next week right? <laughs> <laughs> we'll, do, we'll all do one <laughs> everything's on youtube now oh poster printing okay so um my mom and my sister live in the city and we Met my my daughter and I live here in Westmont, and we were gonna do a little family outing at Navy Pier because we hadn't been in a long time. So we went, we met. It was like sometime in July, and my sister took a was taking a picture, a selfie of herself, and I I photo bombed her, <laughs> and I was like, when she sent the picture to me on my phone, it was just a, I was like, oh, it's a cute picture. So I I decided to use that picture as my test for poster printing, and. Again, on here, there is a, um, a link to say submit a print request. I'm going to click on that so you guys can see what the page looks like. So you, um, you put your information in, your phone number, your email. You decide, you can see the max size of it, paper type. And it says paper type, but there's usually <laughs> only one. Oh, there's two here now, two types. And then right here is where you upload the file, and then you can put notes. So I took that picture that my sister sent me where I photobombed her and had it turned into a poster. <laughs> I don't know, it looks kind of blurry, but that's my sister, and that's me photobombing her. <laughs> I'm going to get it for Christmas. But I thought that was so nice that, so if you have, um, pictures or something that you would like to be in a poster size and I asked for a small one because I didn't you know want it. but you can see you can get it the uh, 10 inches by three feet so 10 inches wide by three feet that's pretty big 
You know, so if you have something like a picture that you really liked and you thought, oh, this would make a good poster, you can get a, you can request a poster. And um, when I sent it, and I, and, and it's in this deck, so I, I forwarded that to it, and I immediately got an email saying, oh, we received your request. And then as they worked on it, once they finished it, I got another email saying, we've, uh, we're finishing it, but you or we'll start on it. But oh, they 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 priced it first. So before they start working on it, they'll send you an email saying this is how much it costs, and they want you to pay for it before they start to print it. So mm -hmm. um, you can either come up and pay here at the service help the computer help desk, or you can I think there's a link in the email that you can pay for it that way. And then once you pay for it, they'll say oh your print is ready. You can come pick it up. So. Here we go. So pricing examples for a really big <laughs> poster, it looks like it'll be about 20, 20 bucks. And for a smaller one, it'll be about $12. But, you know, I thought it, it was a really smooth process. I completed that. I got my confirmation email. And it took about, I mean, I think maybe a week. But it just depends. And they did have some questions because the size I wanted they said it was really pixelated when they made it really big and so they sent me a couple emails saying can we make it smaller so you may have to communicate back and forth if you want something to say yeah it's okay or I don't mind it being pixelated or something like that but once they you know confronted me and they communicated with me back and forth about how I wanted it and I said you know whatever size when you're doing it whenever it starts to look good stop right there and then that's it and so that's what I got and so I thought that was cool too poster printing and on the side of the website it'll, it gives you some questions like what can I print what kind of paper what kind of formats and things like that so I I literally just um, uh, down, I, I emailed the picture to my myself and then downloaded it to my computer and then attached it to the to the form where was it Did we go to this mm -hmm. yeah I just attached it to the form here yeah, where it says add files, I just attached it there as just a, you know, a JPEG and, and it was fine. So I think that is also cool. Any questions about poster printing? No. What's next? Okay, so this um, wireless printing is not in the deck um, because we've actually um, halted it during COVID because we were doing curbside printing. And so when I did the deck initially, we weren't we were still doing curbside printing, and we didn't we weren't doing the two. But wireless printing is just what it sounds like. Um, if you don't have a printer at home, or say your printer is on the blink for some reason, and you need something printed, um, go to if you click there, you can print from your your mobile device, or if you're at your laptop at home, you will select whether you want a black and white or color, and it tells you how much ten cents a page for. Um, black and white, 25 for color. Oh, I'm sorry. No, um, I got to go. I'm in. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, um, and then you enter your card number, and then you would just uh, browse and upload a file here. Then once you do that, you would click your go ahead button, and it will instruct you. And they tell you to give them 24 hours um, to get to it. So, like, if you had something that you needed printed off, and you knew your printer was out of ink, and it was, you know, the cartridge was coming. You would send it to the, and then you would pick it up here at the computer help desk upstairs, mm -hmm. and they would tell you how much it costs. But you, I mean, you can figure it out. If you're printing like 10 pages black and white, that's just a dollar when you get here. But you, so you're basically sending it from wherever you are to our printer up here. And so you can print wirelessly or remote. And people do that sometimes if, if they don't have a um, printer at home and they really need something printed out, you know. It's only 10 cents a copy. Oh. Yeah, 10 cents a page. So, yeah, so I was just, let me go back because I don't know, Tricia, if you saw this. Um, where is it? So, it is wireless printing. Hold on. Let's go here. Click wireless printing and it opens up to this page. Okay, I went to get my husband to tell him what. Good stuff. Good stuff. <laughs> I know. Great. I hope you both come and use it, but I was just I saying. Said, you can get 3D printing there. I mean, you never know when you'll need that. Who would think of going is, to the library? This is your 21st century library, not the, forget those uh, old card catalogs. Of, 
I was, he's saying exactly what I said. Like, I remember going to a library in Louisiana once for a convention, and there was a museum, and in the museum window, they had a car catalog. <laughs> How old do you oh, no. something you use is now in a museum? <laughs> you know what? This sounds terrible. You can always smell, almost smell what all that paper and book, yes, you yeah. know? Oh, yeah. And you could not talk in the library, you know that. But I mean, you, you literally had to just, or they were with an evil eye, you know. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> but we we have um, study rooms here now, and so people know that if they really wanted to be completely quiet, they reserve a study room, mm -hmm. because otherwise, you know, I mean, people, we we still encourage you to not be so loud. But people talk on their phones, you know, kids oh, are. No. <laughs> So we don't we don't really enforce the old rule of no like you can barely read loud and then you would get put out of the library. <laughs> different now, but yeah. So if you if your printer's on the blink or you don't even have a printer but you really need something printed out, unfortunately it's not immediate. Like I said, they tell you to give them a 24 hour turnaround time. So if you printed it. Like if you sent it last night, you could probably come in in the morning, even though it's you know hadn't been twenty. You can come in in the morning, and then they, they'd say, "Oh yeah, we see it here in the queue," and they'd print it out for you, and then you'd pay at the desk, the computer help desk. So we do have wireless printing available. And now my favorite section is the Anything Emporium. I said we were going to come back to this because it is truly amazing. Okay. The Anything Emporium is just what it sounds like. Um, th we have a collection of things that we thought would be cool for people to be able to kind of try out, but not have to purchase. You know, so we have, and we have different sections. We have the Adult and Teen Services section, so that will be up here, um, it, sort of like at the Ask Us Desk, and then the Technology section, which will be things that will be at the Computer Help Desk, and then the Kids Room section. So. Just to give you an idea, uh, up here at the adult team, yeah, you can check out um, virtual reality headset. Yes, portable CD players. You can check out a Roku, the streaming device. You can check that out. If you don't want to buy one and you want to see if it really works or it's going to be cool, you can check it out from the library. That would be in adult team services. I checked out this cry cut machine and I was going to do a cool video about how to use it. Okay, so it was way above. <laughs> okay. this I, heard of it. I don't even know what it is. They have it like at Joanne Fabrics, so I don't know what it is. If, but. Yeah, if you are a person that's very crafty, and I say cry cut, but I think they call it a cricket. A cricket. So you, it's sort of like. Um, you can cut out oh. the material. You can use paper or vinyl or wood, you know, and just cut out little shapes and designs and put them in places. But when I got the, oh. it's a it's, it's a big machine, and it had a disc, and it said, uh, insert disc into the computer and download program. I said, oh, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> and my daughter, the teenager, was like, oh, come on, mom. I said, no, uh -uh -uh. that's just too much work for me for, for something. I was like, I'm not that interested in it. <laughs> but, if, but it was so funny because the day I had checked it out to do that, someone called and asked, do you have a cricket machine there? And I said, I'm about to check it in right now so you can get it. So there are people who really want it and they want to use it. And some of these things you may have to actually place a hold on because it's, they stay checked out. For, uh, for a while, and I think you get two weeks on most of the things. So that was the something that was in the adult and teen services. Um, in the computer. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I my husband what might be interested. What's a kilowatt reader? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to look that up. Yes. So you know what? We're gonna go to. Uh, I'm gonna show you how to place a hole, and we'll look up that one and see if it has a description of what that is. <laughs> um, so let's see. Oh, at the computer help desk. Now I have checked out this. We have wireless hotspots, and I checked one out and took it home. So if you, you know, your internet. I don't know if you. You know, you're in between internet service providers at the time, and it actually worked. It wasn't, you know, a very strong, you know, but if you're somewhere and you need to have Wi-Fi with you, you can check out a hotspot. My daughter checked out this graphing calculator. These things, the cheapest one you can get is probably a hundred bucks if you buy it. 
but she checked it out because she, you know, yeah, they're very expensive. And she now has these noise hand- canceling headphones checked out. She started because she was fully remote during um during COVID. She's back in school now, but she will be at home and she was like, Mom, every time I need to talk, the guy starts cutting the grass outside. The kids are <laughs> so I said, let's check these out. And she loves them, so she's she's checked them out, and she's got them checked out now. Her birthday is in November. I'm gonna buy her her own, <laughs> so we don't have to keep checking out those because she loves them. She loves those things, and she says that I snore, which I don't believe. And she, <laughs> you know, that's, that's just kid talk. But anyway, <laughs> so um, and then this one I thought was funny, guys. There's a night vision camera and paranormal investigation kit. And it's just what it sounds like. There's like a you if you've ever watched those ghost hunter shows where they have the thing that measure there's a thing that measures the temperature in the room so you know when there's a spirit there and there's a box that can capture the and okay, funny thing, my teenage daughter again. So I said, I'm gonna check this out. And we had just watched Conjuring Three. She forbade me to bring it in the house. <laughs> She's like, Don't you welcome those spirits into the house? <laughs> I, I wonder. I wonder if this night vision camera. Do you think that, like, you could see animals outside or something with that? Oh yeah. I don't know, but you know what? I think um, in the kids' room they have the night vision um, goggles or the night vision. Uh, what do you call these? Binoculars for that. They have a kid, but but I bet you can because that camera. I looked at it and it has like an infrared light. A infrared attachment that you put on it and then you can when you look through you can see things at night so i bet you you That's could kind of cool yeah yeah it but you know I, like i said i had to leave it here at the library because i was forbidden to bring it to the house <laughs> now the kids room has a lot more stuff and i'm going to click on view all so you can just see the list of the things that they have here here we go and in the, there's a family ghost hunting kit and this one i think has a ouija board in it wasn't allowed to bring that home. Oh, man. <laughs> um, uh, coding like robots that they can take home. The metal detector kit. Oh, that's my segue into the video. Hold on. I did a video <laughs> about the metal detecting kit. I'm going to play it for you now. And it looks like I have on my um, Downers Grove Library uniform <laughs> that I always wear. Here we go. Hello, my name is Tricia Thompson, and I work in the circulation department of the Dallas Twelve Public Library. In addition to our book collection, we also have a collection of fun and interesting things that we call the Anything Emporium. And one of the things in that Anything Emporium is this metal detector, which I checked out. Now, if you've ever wondered if you have buried treasures in your backyard, then this is the kit for you to check out. Included in the kit is Treasure Hunter's Handbook, a guide on how to use this metal detector. There's a little card here that tells you what's inside the kit and also what you'll have to provide yourself, such as like shovels or other things to kind of dig dirt if you so choose. And there's also two trays for collecting all the valuables you're going to find. <laughs> and here is the metal detector. And it is really, really easy to use. So you can pull up the handle here. And then if you unfold the wand, you can also pull out the stem. There's a button here that lets you adjust how far out you want to go, so I'm just going to go about to there and push it back in. On the side is the on and off button. You turn it on, and you're probably going to hear a lot of beeping <laughs> noises and sounds as it sort of gets acclimated. Well, there we go. <laughs> and on the screen, I'm not sure if you guys can see this, you can adjust the volume of the detector. You can also adjust the sensitivity so that it's either very sensitive or not as sensitive. You can change what you want it to detect, everything or just those three things, which is aluminum and jewelry and money, or just 
jewelry and money or if you choose everything all four of those icons that means it's going to pick up rusty nails horseshoes and all those other things <laughs> you're not looking for and then this button allows it to signal in on just a specific thing so it will it's very sensitive and it allows you to target Ooh, hear that that's fun so, <laughs> options of how you want to detect how loud you want to be notified and what items you want to detect with the metal detector so let's give it a shot let's see if we can detect oh the metal's close by all right so when you're using it you just move it in a sweeping motion across the floor or whatever had fun with that my daughter and I took it home and I hid money like around the living room and then I let her come through and she play, and she thought it was just the greatest thing of course you know we didn't find it. we didn't find anything of value but oh I have to warn you about this though there are actually I didn't realize there's so many people that do this there are restrictions about where you can do the metal detecting like there have been um restrictions like for going to if you go to like a national park or like a you know a forest oh, preserve so sometimes you, you just be careful or check online to I think there's a list like you can go to and say Illinois areas where you are allowed to actually use it because I didn't know that that was such a big thing but you can't do it everywhere they don't want you I guess like finding something in you know in DuPage County you know park, forest preserve and then keeping it and maybe it's something that they could use you know for a museum so you can I think, you know, in your own backyard, you're safe, but you just make sure if you're going to do it out somewhere else that you check first and make sure you're allowed to do it there because they have restrictions. All right, so this is the page that shows everything that's on in the in, anything important in the, both the kids and the adults. And I think, so right here it says, check anything important item availability. Now, what was it? Oh, the kilowatt reader. We're going to look for that. <laughs> Let's see. So if I click on that, well, it, reader, come back. Okay. let me see if we can find <laughs> it. Laptop kit. So these are the things that are available. Making sense kit. Give her the stars. Should I type it? Should I just type in? I probably should because everything's listed here. Oh, I checked wow. this out too. And that was fun. The weaving loom, that was fun. I checked that out. <laughs> I went through and checked out. So, let me see. I think. Oh. Maybe I should just type in kilowatt. Oh, there it is. So let's see what this is. I'm going to click on this. Yeah. It says consumers can monitor and project energy costs and find out what electric devices cost to operate. Oh. Huh. So the kilowatt, the kilowatt electricity usage monitor assesses the efficiency of home appliances, provides the ability to determine electrical expense by the day, week, month, and year, and can be used to evaluate the quality of the electrical power from a utility company by monitoring voltage, line frequency, and power factor. Huh. <laughs> 
Yeah, he's so excited. My husband's an electrical engineer, so he's all, he's all in. Look, so it is on the shelf. That means he can check that out. Excuse me. So he could place a hold on it. Like if you clicked here, put your library card number in your pen, and I'm going to go ahead and do mine if I can remember it. I have to copy and paste mine. It's too long. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And, all right. So here you go. So now <clears throat> you can choose where you want to pick it up. And we, I don't know if you guys know, but we have lockers now. I don't think you can put the emporium items in there. But now you know when you come to this page, you can choose either the library. And for anything emporium items, we do uh, require that you, when you're picking it up, you pick it up from the department that you place the hold from. So like if it's a kid's one, you would go to the kid's desk and they'd have it. Or if it was a computer help desk item, you go there. And when you return it, because a lot of the items are big. You know, and we also want to make sure that they don't like go through a book drop or something like that because they could be damaged. So you ask you to pick them up at, you know, the department that they belong to and then bring them back to that department too. But if I wanted the kilowatt reader, I could just say public library and I would submit the whole request and it would be placed on hold for me. Then you would get a notification just like anything else saying, hey, an item you placed on hold is ready for pickup. I'm going to not do that because I don't want it. And plus, I want your husband to be able to put a hold on it if he wants to. <laughs> And you can also call. A lot of people do that because they sometimes they want to ask questions about it, especially for anything in Porium items. You can call up and say, I wanted to get some information about the kilowatt, you know, reader. And they would probably transfer you up to the um, Ask Us desk. And then they would actually tell you all, tell you a little about it, and they could place the hole for you right there too. And then you can come and pick it up. So um, you can come. <laughs> So I can I ask another question? Sure. Um, I just think those night vision glasses would be really cool to see because there's so many animals out now, you know. But if I just wanted those, got could I check out the ones in the kids department, or is it just kids size, or is that no, allowed? I checked out actually. I checked that out with my daughter, and we used them. So and it was nice. I and I checked out the telescope too. So yeah, you can check out things from. You don't have to be a kid to be able to check out. The things from the you know the kids department anything emporium you definitely but are those glasses just kid size binoculars they were, or are they well they weren't i would say they were about uh, not they weren't like toy ones they were real yeah you know, so you like, could wear them yeah like yeah them. so they were like that so they weren't you know i think that would be cool too we, we checked out the roller coaster builder thing we built a roll we did everything they're fun oh, oh Look at this. We have a VHS to DVD converter. So if you have movies still on <laughs> VHS, you're dating yourself. But if you still do, you can check out. And this thing is huge, guys. Yeah. This is that big thing. It comes with a trial. Yes. It won't let you uh, professional movies. It won't, like, if, you, if you've got a movie from Disney and you want to put it on a DVD, it won't let you do it. Yeah. So it's it's more yeah, so it's like home movies, right? Like if you have a home movies, movies, yes, your home movies. Oh, like if you have okay. a my VHS, but if you say, you know, I want a copy of this, it won't. It it knows, so it won't let you do it. So, yeah, the copy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but that's our anything point, and I think that is everything on the Beyond Books. Were you guys amazed at all the things? As amazed as I was when I, when I went through it, I couldn't believe all the things that we have to offer here. It was really great. I love it. I hope that you saw something that interests you. I know you did, Trisha, your husband. <laughs> that, <laughs> that, you know, he's already planning on how he's going to save money with that. I know what you're trying to do. <laughs> like, Yeah, that's a good thing to have, though, because electricity is not cheap. So. Yeah, some fun things, and then some things too that could help you out like that. I, um, the hot spots. Um, we have uh, the the Roku. We also have like um, e-readers, like a Kindle Kindle white page. I think e-reader that you can check out. So a lot of things, like I said, they we have these things that are so cool because maybe you were wondering about it, 
but you didn't want to just spend your money on it and buy it and find out you didn't like it. So now you can give give these things a test drive and see, you know, if it's something that interests you. You say, like that cricket. No. That <laughs> cutting out the, that, that was just too much. I was like, no, I'll just do cut them out by hand or something. But you know, if you're really into arts and in uh, scrapbooking, a lot of people use it for that because you can cut out different material types. So there we go. Uh, that is everything. I I really hope you enjoyed it, and I hope it was uh, informative. And I hope you can use some of the things in our Beyond books in the future. Any other questions or comments? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate oh, it. I enjoyed it. I'm glad you guys came. I really appreciate it. Um, and I'm going to probably uh, add a slide to the deck about the wireless printing. And like Annie said, I think we'll probably get it out. If not tomorrow, uh, first thing next week, we'll send out the PowerPoint of what I discussed. So you guys, if you want to go back through and you know check out some things. Great. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you all so much for coming. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to try to stop sharing. Oh, there we go. I'm going to stop sharing. There we go. All right. Thank <laughs> you guys again. I truly appreciate it and have a wonderful rest of your day.